있습니다. 1세트 해결의 시작! 합니다! 안녕하세요. But that's how Code A is. The maps are all randomly selected. You do not have a say in it at all. You can veto only, but you can't veto everything. So Tails is going to have to play on this big map in his first match in this best of three. I talked to Linok a little bit earlier. As usual, he is pretty confident about his match. He really wants to kind of prove himself again. He knows that dropping out of Code A would be really disappointing for him. On the other hand, we have Tails. A player that is really known for his impressive builds. Yeah, he definitely is. And uh, I I think that, you know, Lenok recently, he has not been looking as strong as the Lenok of the past. Look at his record at 49 over 41. And that is a total of exactly 100 games played, actually, which is really interesting. But uh, he is just over 50%. But he was much more dominant in earlier times. Tails is a scary guy. This guy has killed many a strong Zerg in the past. He even took out Nest T in a team league once. How exactly does 49 wins and 41 losses end up? That's actually 90 games played, not 100. What? That is 90, not 100. Oh. Nah. Oh. That's an F. It would have to be 49 right and 51. I'm ah, I. I was oh. like, well, oh, this is the most embarrassing moment of my <laughs> life. Like, I was like, ah, how, how can a hundred ah, games being end up with this? I and I look at it, I'm like, well, that doesn't work. I that saw, doesn't add up. I saw a nine and a one, man. I was trying to look <laughs> smart. I just, I looked Even at it for Tails a second. Even Tails is laughing. I know. Well, listen, man. Uh, Tails can laugh at me all he wants if he has that hairstyle. I was a little bit disappointed when he changed his hair back to normal after he had that crazy hairstyle the last uh, season of Team League. And I guess after his team failed to make it to the finals, he didn't change it back. I was really disappointed, but Tails has redeemed himself with me today. You're going to see Lena can take him out here. The starting map is Atlanta Spaceship. This is the GSL Code S with Wolf and Kaldor. Atlanta Spaceship, and to the top right, we have the Zerg player starting in the red. Starting for FXO, we have... FXO Lena. The Linoctopus, the Zerg Panda Bear. Teddy Bear. Yeah. Grizzly Bear? No, nah, not really. Every time I see a picture of Lino, I just want to cuddle him. Well, what if you see him in real life? Is it only photos that do this to you? Then usually he's the one who tries to cuddle me and then oh, I'm like backing okay. off and I'm like, ah, not today. But his opponent to the bottom left, starting for the MVP team, this is. MVP Teji. If I made you a stuffed Lenok uh, doll, would you sleep with it at night if you got scared? This is weird. Um, well, I mean, it's you said you you want to skip for. Okay, weapons. I'm not scared at night. Okay, all right. But, but if I was, I would. I I would too, actually. Uh, because nothing is scarier than Lenok's pre spread and his late game Zerg army, and I would feel safe with that. Uh, Lenok, a great Zerg player, you know, he's been famous ever since he played against Clyde in Jungle Basin so many seasons ago. The thing about Tails is Tails and Creator are the two players that, for example, 
Naniwa always watches when they, when they play because he always tries to find some inspiration for his own builds. So that's the one thing that we can really look forward to. I will never forget this one game that Tails played. Was it against Nada on Entombed Valley against the Terran where he played this um, first really weird looking style where he went for Stargate and then straight into Colossi, attacked with exactly the right amount of units and completely crushed him. And I can't remember if it was Nada, but I will never forget the play that he, the game that he used. By the way, uh, I can't remember exactly who that player was either, but we are seeing no Forge. We are seeing Nexus first and the gate. Now, he's actually double gassing right now and is completely cutting the Forge out. This is actually pretty ri uh, risky. And he it's spots a, this. It's a Tails build. It is a Tails build, man. This is pretty cool. <laughs> Wolf is looking at it, his jaw drops, and he's like, uh, uh, is, does this work? <laughs> well, you know, um, I have experimented with builds like this in the past, and on the ladder it's tough because you get all in a lot, but against someone who's going to take a fast third hatchery like this, this could actually work. This could actually work. I, I think there's a little bit of weaknesses in this build. It makes it so that your pressure is going to come out much, much faster. For example, this first Zelda is going to be so scary. But then, what is your forge upgrades? And uh, oh, the the look timing. at the timing. Look the at that. Oh, oh he should block, though. Oh, and well, Linox should enter, actually. Yeah, Linox should run in. Uh, two Zerglings are not going to kill anything here. He just gets the scouting information. So he should actually just block this. That would be the best thing for him to do right now. Well, he's continuing to peck away at that pylon, but the second zealot does emerge. Nice micro on the lings. He actually has not lost any of them yet, and this makes Tails' attack that he wanted to have a little bit weaker because it's not. He's chrono boosting constantly on the gateway, but he's not able to use that timing, and he killed a probe. So this is great for Lena. But this timing was really so clutch. It was so close. If you just you could watch, really like the zerglings trying to enter, and the zealot is just popping out of the gate. So if he plays this like a little bit faster, just a few seconds, one second would be enough, and uh, the wall is completely shut down. Um, completely close. By the way, super fast Twilight Council for Tails is next. Uh, that's the next step here for this new build that we're seeing from him. His gas is banked up quite high. Now, we could see anything from this Twilight Council, except plus two, because there's no Forge and he hasn't started plus one. So it could be Blink, it could be Dark Shrine. Uh, you know, Blink is not commonly seen. He hasn't added any extra gateways. I think we may see him just go ahead and add a DT. He's known for this. He beat an ST in the Team League uh, in the Ace match with this build. As it is, it is a really cool build. It's something that's a little bit new, that's a little bit fresh. Those Zerglings running in were definitely not planned, one of the disadvantages that he had here. But still, here's the Dark Shrine and he tries to make this work. There is no Overlord in uh, proposition. There's no Overlord anywhere. So this is not going to be scouted. Linok has to completely rely on uh, his gun. Yeah. He will certainly have to rely on that. Uh, the Overlord will be spotted by these Zealots again as well. So. He knows that the Overlord is not going to come in and try to trick him. Well, he actually... The Overlord... Uh, he's going he's gonna to kill it. Yeah. Ah. Oh my god. <laughs> he loses sight! Oh no! If he, he actually loses vision! If he doesn't stop this Overlord with one hit point, by the way, it's just going to see his Dark Shrine. This is actually... <laughs> This oh, is why I freaked wow. out, because if he doesn't kill it with that Stalker, it sees Dark Shrine no matter what. Oh, but he doesn't see what a crazy string of coincidences. No. <laughs> what is happening here? Like I said, man, it's a crazy string of coincidences. Uh, no, maybe no. No, no, no. no, no. He's and not seeing it. <laughs> he has no idea. No, he sees Twilight Council only. He sees the plan. Oh. oh, he doesn't see it. He doesn't know. <laughs> No idea if Evolution did, Chamber did and Lair happen? started, but that's just the normal timing for these. The 3DTs have been warped in. He's did got that nothing. Just happened? It did. He oh, sees wow. him now, but what is he going to do? He can't. He can't do a lot. One of the hatches is going to... If he's moving in with those DTs right away, one of those hatches is going to fall. Yeah, it's weird. He's actually just going to fight the army with this, which, you know, can be effective as well. But he doesn't have to. He could kill a hatch here. Yeah. He doesn't know that though, and I respect his choice here, but this is a little bit weird. Now he's going to go for some harassment as he continues to chase this Roach army that's in the middle of the map. Leenok in an awkward position make five, five spores. Yeah, five spore crawlers right away. 
One of them is going to die, though. Yep, certainly will. He has to start a second one immediately at that hatchery. And this is only significant because this is the only base where Linux tried to build only one single spore crawler, right? Now he's going to build additional ones, but this DT was already worth it. This DT did a lot of damage. Where's the rest of the DTs? They're just chasing down those roaches, aren't they? Yeah, they're just trying to be as annowing as possible. And How many kills does this DT have, by the way? Can you check? Uh, he's gone up to six worker kills, and in total, I believe the other DT got ten kills. Eight. Oh, only eight. He's moving away here, not surrounded. Nice! Getting out of the range of the Spore Crawler immediately. Very well done by Tails so far. Really impressed here. And he tries to save one DT, but in the fact loses two as a result. Bit sloppy there in the end, but the damage has already been done. Now Linok is trying to immediately rebuild his drone count. He's at 15 now. Uh, he's building 15, that's what I was about to say. He's at 54, and this will put him to 69. You see math right there? Wow, you're... <laughs> You're getting me there. I will. I I made a mistake. Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, but the double infestation pit is probably not really what Linux intended. No. Autopilot uh, once again builds two of them. See, when something like this happens, I feel I feel better about my earlier miscalculation. Yeah, and you can. I can, you know. The third base is coming up for Tails right now, and usually Protoss really struggles to get the third up, but with the build that Tails used. He is in a pretty good spot when it comes down to defending the third here. He's ahead in supply, which is really rare at this point. He's at the same amount of harvesters. Yeah. And he's taking a risky you. third base, which is no longer risky. I can promise you one thing. Naniwa is taking notes right now. <laughs> this is no longer a risky third because of the position he got into earlier on. Uh, and this, this is a great feeling for Tails. Um, He's adding cannons, not very many though, just being super careful. He knows if his opponent tries to attack him, he can use even DTs for defense, because he can snipe Overseers, unless his opponent makes a ton of Overseers, in which case he'll be happy anyways. So, he's going to feel really comfortable with this base, and he can even take a fourth fairly soon as well. He's adding four more gateways, he may actually try to hit a timing here. At the same time though, the Linoctopus is a creature that is most dangerous when you leave it alone for like 15 yeah. minutes. And that's something that Tails definitely knows. That's one of the lessons that a lot of players learned that had to face Linok in the past. So uh, he has to be careful that he does not give Linok the opportunity not to not only come back in this game, but to unfold his strategy and uh, get in the position that he wants to. He's already spreading free ball roads. He's going for the roach push. We have additional upgrades, drop and speed for the uh, Overlord. So this could get nasty. He has to be careful here. He's in a good position. Tails played very well so far. But Tails is kind of known that even though he has great builds and that he has an amazing amazing um, early game and mid game, his late game sometimes is a bit shaky. Yeah, it certainly can be. And the gates that he made would allow him to hit a timing attack, but it looks like that's not his plan. Uh, he's actually just going to use that as a wall and hold this third. He's taken triple gases there, of course, one of which being the high yield geyser, which he has smartly put four probes in. A lot of people forget to do that, but Tails is not one of them. And if he catches this army actually on one side, he will crush it with the army he has. With this amount of stalkers at Blink. But he's not going to find it. Linok actually. Linok oh. is going for the drop. And yeah, will he spots the drop? Ah, uh, yes, the yes, his army in the perfect position. Oh, he's oh. it. Oh, uh oh my god, oh my god. Linok oh. is in trouble. Uh, he certainly is. He blinks in and takes them down. Best position for Tails to be in. The force field. Trap a few of these roaches, but to be honest with you, I think those force fields just help him. Well, that is that. He loses every single roach that was on the ground. Several of the roaches and the overlords went down before they could even get dropped. And Leenok, you know, he's moving quick right now, but look at Tails. He is looking pretty content. Those force fields actually helped Leenok a little bit. He could get out with those overlords, and they still had a lot of roaches in them. On the other hand, yeah, Tails made sure that he could trap at least a few of them. But that was really dangerous, and Linog not only scared, but also losing a lot. Yeah, it was a... Look at the units lost. 4,000 versus 9... Uh, it's actually nearly 5,000 5, against 2,000. 2, yeah. Insanity. Tails even in supply at the 15 and 30 minute mark. This is actually insane. We're just walking in at the bottom, but no, with all those sentries, this is not something that Linog can pull off. And Tails is moving forward against the army composition that is not really strong enough. We have one immortal, that's all he has, but with all these stalkers, 37 in total, I don't think that the roaches are really enough to hold him at bay here. 
No, they're certainly not, as he has actually warped in more units at home. Oh, and now he's, he's killing, he is killing everything here. He can force field the ramp as well. Tails in a perfect position. Really well played, a great opening, and he capitalizes on all the small mistakes that Lino made so far. And Tails actually, he plays impressive here. The Roach is definitely giving him a hard time, but he's trying to lure them back into the range of the cannons. Lino has a lot of them though, but he's dropping in supply as we speak. And even if he can take down this base, at the same time we have Tails not only killing his main base, but also taking, taking a lot of units down at the third and the natural. Great stop position, Micro, here on the pro. GG! That was a bit stressful for Tails there at the end, but he split himself well. He was heading home with the majority of his army, he sent just enough units to kill the final base of Lenok, killed the spines before they were finished. Great base trade, you know, it, it be, base trade mind sense of exactly where to be, how many sentries to make before the warping of units defensively at home. Great control, even using the stop position micro on the probes. I was really impressed with Tails overall in this game, but a lot of this game did come down to how much damage he did early on. And he was, uh, in, uh, in some ways, a little bit lucky with this, but I loved his opening. Uh, yeah, he started with great. the gate before Forge, skipping the Forge entirely, and now, guys, the map that Lenok has to play on, this is not his choice. It is Entombed Valley. This it is Entombed Valley, and this is not going to be easy for him. I have to say that Tails played really impressive here, and, uh, yeah, he enjoyed that game. He definitely did. I would hope so. Wow, Tails. It was actually confirmed that he named himself after the Sonic character. Excuse me? Someone told me that. It was confirmed that he named himself after the Sonic, the Hedgehog ah, character, okay. Tails. So, that's that's pretty cool. Well, with this hair color, there's a slight resemblance. Yeah, exactly. He definitely likes the, the orange. Um, imagine if Alive still had that color. And now we're suddenly uh, facing an Entombed Valley, and this will actually give Tails a lot of additional opportunities. This will give him a lot of potential uh, changes in his build order. Yeah, we may see him just play a very straight up PvZ this time. No exceptions, no changes. Just play it totally stripped, go for the late game, go for that mothership. Potential carrier switch is there as well on this map. Lenok has his work cut out for him here. He is one game away from being knocked out of not only code A, but down to code B. Well, actually, I guess that those two things I said are exactly the same, but what I mean to say is he will not be going to the up and down matches, but also he will be out of the GSL and will have to re-qualify, whereas Tails will secure his up and down match spot. This is the GSL Code A, and Lenok is desperate. See if he can catch things up on a Tomb Valley. I am Wolf with me as 